I'm talking about you this left situation. Us. No, I left no, you. I left a situation. That what situation? Was... You never wanted her anyway. No, no. Keep Why are you turning going. this to her? You I never, said I don't want you this. Never want... You don't care about Why her. You, you don't her? love her. With all this drama, I have to be candid. I don't know what's more painful. Being unwanted the day that I landed, or just knowing my presence on earth now. Clearly, y'all hadn't planned it. Right? Bro! <laughs> For knowledge of God, Kid Life Productions, Hip Hop is Real. We are out here, man, in the building. We got one of the dopest new young artists that I've seen this year, man. Um, Haley Smith is in the building with us, man. Haley, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, you know, one of the songs that came to my attention, you know, about Brother Herman Smalls was, you know, the song that you had about, you know, the message to your father and everything like that. I know it's, you know, could you give us an explanation about that song, what made you come up with that, and how did that come about? Well, the song, I Miss My Daddy, it was brought upon because I had friends who went through the situation of not being able to have a relationship with their father. And so that's how the song was, like, basically brought upon. Mm. And uh, just after you recorded it and then you seen, like, everyone, you know, talking about it and seeing mm -hmm. the views go up and everybody, you know, showing you love for that song, how does that make you feel about, you know, delivering such a powerful message. That makes me feel good because it feels like I'm doing something like positive for especially kids young kids my age. Mm -hmm. So it was like I feel like I'm doing something that's gonna help everybody. And um just being so young, like how does it feel like being able to like see that your voice has such power and it can actually move people in all different ages? Well, it's good because I get to like um perform in many places and I get so many good feedback about my voice and everything. And mm. I'm able to do stuff like this, like the video of sending a message to everybody. No, that's dope. And um, I wanna know, when did you start singing, you know, and who are some of your favorite artists? I started singing when I was nine. Wow. And my favorite artists are Alicia Keys, Adele, Aretha Franklin, yeah. Mmm, you got some strong, powerful singers. Heavyweights, heavyweights. <laughs> and, um, you know, you being so young and uh, seeing your generation is like, you know how, are you into hip-hop as yeah, well? Yeah, I'm into hip-hop. Who's some of your favorite hip-hop artists? Oh, um, I like Drake. Mm. I just found out a new artist, his name was Post Malone. Yeah. Yeah, I like I'm him saucer. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um... Like, I wanted to ask hold you, Hold on, right? hold on. Y'all got to explain that inside joke there. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what, what's up with that artist that y'all both laughing? I'm like, okay, I got a five. What's, who is he? Why did I listen? Oh, oh he's good? <laughs> nah, he's, he's very well. Good, he got yeah. a sonic, his, the, the way yeah, it sounds. Y'all both fulfilled it because y'all both laughing about the same yeah. thing about this artist. <laughs> nah, yeah, she knows. Yeah, get back, get back. And um, what I wanted to ask you, right, a lot of the young generation people may say, you know, the music is changing and certain things aren't hip-hop. Are you into the, you know, Little Yachty's and the Uzi Birds and all of that new type of music as well? Like, what well, is that music to you? Um, I know your friends and a lot of people probably are into that. What do you think about that type of music? I mean, I like the music. I Sometimes I don't listen to the words. I just like the beat. Because okay. the beat is like, mm -hmm. that's how everybody Shit. gets going. Oh, <laughs> So, um, what do you think about, you know, the messages in those songs? Since you are, you know, now you see the message in your song and mm -hmm. how that could move people. And now you know your friends might be listening to those type of music mm -hmm. and they have certain messages. When you hear it, you're like, well, we might not be ready for that. Or, you know what I'm saying? The message, they talk about drug use and certain things in the yeah. music. How do you, like, you know, what do you think about the message? I mean, the messages in the song is not that good. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the songs, they be talking about how they grow up and get their money and stuff like that. They trying to strive for the better and stuff like that. But most of the music is just like, yeah, the messages ain't good. Mm. And, uh, like, is it hard for you, though, like, when you're making music, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> to try to stay on message that when you see what's popular and that's getting a lot of attention and these guys are getting famous and money and stuff like that, does it make it make you want to change your message or do you, like, like where you're going? I like where I'm going. I like my mm. messages that I, I give in my songs. How about your friends? Have they ever got a chance to hear your music? And what's their reaction? Yes, they got a chance to hear my music, but they didn't get a chance to hear the music that's coming out now. I miss my dad. They didn't okay. get to hear that. So from what they've heard, how do they act when they hear your song and see how young you are and making waves like that? They like my music. They're, they're good supporters. 
That's what's up. That's what's up. And introduce who's this next to you right there. Well, this is the producer of the song, Mr. Charles Bronson. Mr. Charles, how are you doing today? And, you know, if you could give us a breakdown on how you got to produce the song with her and just, you know, the relationship or how you were able to, you know, get everything together. Uh, I met Haley through a, a, a friend of mine and um, he told me that she was an aspiring singer and I went and checked her out at the Apollo and she blew the house down mm. and she was like 13 years old and she had this rich sound to her voice and it was just weird. It was funny because I'm like, how is this girl, this little tiny girl with, with white stockings on? You know how the little, <laughs> the little girls wear the white stockings? And you can really tell that they're really young. And I'm like, how, is, how does she have this kind of rich voice? You know, and so um, I started thinking of like, you know, what kind of material I could put together for. Her. But a lot of the stuff that I've written in the past for females, it, it, it wasn't age appropriate for her. So... I started pulling like like some of the material out of the vault that I had and seeing if we could work with it with her in the studio and around that time I was working on a, a, a soundtrack to a, a documentary about father's rights and I was I said with the songs that I'm currently working on for this soundtrack how could I bring Haley into it and so I felt the best way that I could bring her into it was to do a song pertaining to father's rights mm. that looked at the whole issue of father's rights from the daughter's perspective. Mm. And, you know, me and her talked about it. We talked about what angle we were going to go from. And, and I was, I, I had to kind of like feed her head with the, the intent behind the song so that mm. she would understand it. And she would go there in her performance in the studio as well as on film mm -hmm. and it worked i mean working with her she seems like a, i could just tell she seems like a natural you know what i'm saying yeah that that was a good thing i mean first i had a chance to see the naturalness of her talent in the studio audio wise mm -hmm. but then when we got on the set for the video that's when i got a chance to see her naturalness for film mm. and it she just resonated i mean she was i think she did no more than two takes for everything wow what yeah That's because we we talked crazy. about it it's like i said all right Haley, for instance like i want you to look out the window and look like you're just upset you're sad mm. you you miss your father you want to have a relationship with him but clearly your mother is not allowing it and you're longing for him I want you to have that feeling on your face. And so then it was like, all right, five, four, three, two, action. Boom. And then she just like went there. And it's, all right, we did a scene where, all right, um, we was in a, in a window, right? Uh -huh. It was in a window. I, 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 and I'm talking to her. She's looking out the window at me. Uh -huh. And you had like people looking at it on the side. And she was just like, like the expressions on her face. She was just like, oh, poor dad. <laughs> Oh, he, he, he's just explaining to he's me. And then the cats on the side was like, yo, this girl is yeah. hell, man. Yeah. She's hell. So she's good. She's good yeah, like that. Now, let's, yeah. let's explain that two take thing. Because there are seasoned actors that need four or five to get it right. So mm -hmm. be a, a, a beginner. And you were saying two takes was like the max? Two takes. If yeah. it took more than that, it was just like something that maybe I wasn't communicating uh -huh. properly with her. And then I had to sit and talk to her a little bit more. But I mean, that very seldom. That's that's that really reaching to say it was more than three. That's a building. And um, working with uh, younger younger people and everything like that, you know, especially in the industry of music and things like that, it's a, a lot of different things that come with it. What are the difficult things that you found working with, you know, because I'm sure you probably work with older people and different artists and things like that. What is the, the challenges working with uh, children, if there's any? <clears throat> Man. I guess the hardest part about dealing with a, a child actor is the fact that they're a minor and then uh, there are aspects legally that you have to get around. Mm. But I mean, beyond that, it, it really goes back to the talent. Is the person, uh, do they have endurance in the studio? Can they withstand a, a session that goes an hour over? Can they stand? doing a take three or four times if it's not what you're looking for as a producer because as a producer you have it in your mind what it is that you want 
the artist to express and right. they may not know sometimes the artist doesn't even know what the song is going to be about until they hear the final mix then they're like oh that's what you were trying to get me mm -hmm. you know like sometimes i would tell i mm -hmm. Haley, say um <laughs> she's like what i said say oh i tell her go oh you i mean just something ad off the cuff like, like an ad lib, ad -lib. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and um she won't know why i'm asking her to do it but she'll do it and then when she hears it in the final mix, then she's like, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. what the be doing, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, and speaking of ad-libs, this girl is nice. You know I'm going to go there. This girl is nice with the ad-libs, but the only problem with her is, <laughs> is she waits until I hit stop, and then I go back to the section that we were working on, and I'm setting up like I'm, I'm going, I'm getting ready to enable the track for her to record on, and then she'll do some old fly stuff, and I'm like, oh, she likes to do it when it's not recording. Yeah, and then I say, hold up, Haley, <laughs> do, do that it. again. I can't. She gets nervous. Yeah, yeah. I can't. What you mean you can't? You yeah. just did it. When she's in the free, the free spirit, having fun with it, yeah, it's like, it yeah. comes out natural. It's like yeah. I need that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, just uh, just yourself. You know, um, how how is it being in the music industry, and just you know, what advice have you given her? Just about you know, her her position of you know having a song like that, dealing with that, and you know, just what's going on in the music industry, and how you know, how important it is your words is when it comes to making music, and how powerful that is. Wow, let me see if I can remember all of those questions. That was like a, <laughs> well, was a three-parter. Three <laughs> the main question is, what are some of the advice you've given her about how, the importance of her words and music? Right? All right, I, I'll deal with that one yes. first. I, I tell her to develop her songwriting. That's very important. If you can develop your songwriting, then you not only are in a position where you can make something happen for yourself, but you can make something happen for another artist. Yes. And when you do it, just look at it as like what I do. I'll write a song and then I just put it away. I don't necessarily have to do something with it right then. I just put it away until the inspiration or the time comes where that particular song can be utilized. And it, it comes in handy. And when you are more than just a singer, then you have an opportunity to create more opportunities for right, yourself. Right. You know, you can produce for somebody or you right, can right. write or, or do vocal arrangements for somebody. And she has the gift. All she has to do is just develop it. Right. Mm -hmm. And even just speaking from an era, because back in like Smokey Robinson's time, most of them were writers as well. Because Smokey Robinson got some hits that people wouldn't even know, because he wrote. You know, he was able to do things lyrically. Indeed. So, Indeed. so you're, what you're doing, you're, you're positioning her and other people you counsel to be a quadruple threat. Be an actor. Be a singer. Also have other talents that you can bring to the table. Yeah, and also. If possible, learn how to play an instrument because mm -hmm. it'll help oh, yeah. you with your your writing. Right. It'll enable you to you could just do a chord with instead of having to build one. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, I fortunately I have a a pretty good ear and I can build chords and stuff like that. There was a time when I went and I took piano lessons, but after I learned the theory, I just got so excited. I was like, man. I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I just went and I just started programming mm -hmm. and producing and stuff like that. But it's nothing like being able to sit down and just bang out a, a, a song and just play it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nothing like that. And uh, Haley, what are some of the important things you've learned from Charles and just being, you know, a singer and, you know, having the attention and everything like that? Well, one of the important things I learned was to stay true to yourself. Because the music industry is like, it's tough, and you know how people like they they head get big, like they're like oh I'm all that, get money, I be singing and stuff, performing. So that's like the biggest thing I learned: stay true to yourself. Don't mm. don't let the music industry change you. Mm -hmm. Well, what have you learned about you know what people say about fame and trying to become famous and things like that? What do you mean? Because the more you sing, the more people see you. You know, did you ever get any lessons about what fame is, or understanding of what fame is? Um, no, but I kind of have an idea, like... What's your idea of fame? When you have, like, the big houses and stuff like that? <laughs> no, that's fortune. That's fortune. Oh, okay. That's, fortune. Okay. that's, that's what you got to learn I right mean, there. oh, okay, now I know what you mean. Um, fame is like, more like, like when you like, when you yeah. just, everybody just wants to be around and, you know... Your just... music is like, is like traveling around the world and stuff like that, is that what you mean? Or even if, if I attention, give, that's more what fame yes, is more and then, than anything. And some people need it because to be honest, some folks who become stars because they've always wanted to have attention. 
Now, the interesting thing he shared already about what you do, you do these creative uh, vocals, and then when people ask, you, so you don't want it. So you don't naturally seek fame. So it's going to be very interesting to see because your talent is going to draw more things to you, and you seem to naturally, that's not what you want or something you need. Mm -hmm. So how you balance that is going to be very critical. And uh, Charles, what made you decide to go with, you know, that song in particular, knowing that, you know, Sometimes, like, you know, that might not always hit for certain crowds or certain people because, you know, they might think it's too political or too conscious or too, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, just have a dancing and singing something fun or, you know what I'm saying? What made you decide to take such a serious, you know, song like that with her? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, because at the time, right, I when I when I did the songs, I actually, out of the sessions that we did for that documentary about Father's Rights, we did about five songs, three of which I produced videos for. Mm -hmm. And the reason I went with that one first is because Haley had the look that I was trying to 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 have come across in the video. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the time, she she still had her braces, mm -hmm. so clearly, I mean, you could see that this this was a a young girl. And I felt like you know. I got the videos. I actually had all three of the videos produced. And it was like, okay, which one am I going to go with first? And it was a no-brainer. I had to go with the one with Haley because I knew that she was growing. And pretty soon, she was going to lose the braces as she has. Smile. <laughs> as she has. You know, so, and I also knew that eventually she was going to grow older. She was going to become... 16, 17, 18, right. and then after a while, it that won't window, make sense. That window yeah. is closed yeah. for that. Right. She'd be taller than her mother saying, you know, right. I yeah, miss him, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I figured, let me get this done now. Let me put it out now while she still has that youthful appearance. Right, right. And, and she can come across the way the song requires her to come yeah, across. You nailed it, man. Um, you guys nailed it. What, what was your intention behind that song? Because, you know, that is that has spoken to me. Even when I heard the song, I was like, yeah, this is this is real. You know what I'm saying? So what was your ultimate message that you wanted to give out there for the people who are watching this phone and who might watch this video? And, you know, what was the underlying message for this? Listen to your children. Mm. Mm. Listen to your children because, as I was saying a little earlier, sometimes, like, parents just have this, and I've seen this so many times. I didn't necessarily go through it, but I've seen some of my friends go through it where it's like, not only are they arguing on the phone or in the house, it goes to the courts, and then they talk about it at work with their co-workers, yeah. and nobody's ever talking about how the child feels. Mm -hmm. The children have feelings. Yeah. You know, oh, you're gonna go and stay with your father for the weekend. Mm -hmm. What if the kid don't wanna stay with the father yeah. for the weekend? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? What if it's just something about the visitation rights that are not comfortable? Exactly. What if the child it's tired of the mother doing whatever it is that she's doing. Mm -hmm. And the child doesn't want to spend time with the mother. Nobody listens to the child. It, it, it's like the child is irrelevant. Yeah, that's so, ironic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to put that out and let people see it and, and, and think about it. And I know that there are people who have, you know, a lot to say about it. People are trying to come at it at it at the uh or the offer the opinion. Of, oh, well, how could she know anything? And see, just that alone. How could she know anything? She's so young. They got feelings. Yeah. yeah. They got feelings. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. And, for the, and for the ones who are saying, oh, that's not real and it's not authentic because she didn't live it. They said that? Yeah, it was a couple of people, right? Now, right now? The, the authentic thing, I, I, didn't, I didn't get it. Now, the one, the part I dig, I want to go on that next. But finish uh -huh. that thing. They said, was it authentic? And That's what I picked up from okay. one of the messages, okay. uh, the messages All that right. you if sent I to me. If I can share what my take on that was, okay. it was, again, one, uh, in a conference she said um, she felt that it was kind of giving the, the man a pass and that, okay, he didn't mm. either try hard enough or, or it's making him the villain. Is that, you know, he was at the window and, 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 and he's it saying... might make the women look like, yo, she's the one that's holding up from, you know, the pops or something like that. Right. Or, or, saying, or, okay. or, or, or even this, it minimized her role because whether he's there or not, she has to now be the protector. She has to be the provider. She has to hold it down. So he might be dealing with his emotions about what's going on, but she's producing for that young lady while she's not understanding the situation. For those who are really doing it honorably. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, so how, how did that? Well, yeah, I mean, that that's a good take on it. I mean, after I read it, I, I took it as 
like when she said that she's giving a father a pass and she doesn't know she's like she's impressionable right? mm -hmm. when you say that a child is impressionable you kind of assuming that they don't really have a full grip or understanding of what's going on exactly. so their feeling can't really be authentic yeah. it's superficial and mm -hmm. she had that word in there superficial mm -hmm. wow so that's that's what mm -hmm. i'm speaking from okay, okay okay and now what i'm doing i'm looking for because it, it's got part of this debate i want to read it because the sister took her time, because this thing really, it touched, it touched women. And I just got it, so I'm going to read it into the record. It says, I think the video reflects a superficial portrayal of a societal condition impacting the black community expressed through the eyes of, expressed through the eyes, oh, the eyes of an impressionable young lady whose scope of reality is limited. So, I mean, that was a little harsh. And the rest of it was her father's absence and vilifies the mother. It, it excuses her father's absence and vilifies the mother. Mm. She gives voice to the father and shrouds her mom's pain voice through multiple partners. The man is given credit to validate his absence as simply leaving the situation, as if that is completely logical and an acceptable reason for leaving the home. It negates the fact that in his need to escape, he leaves the challenge of maintaining a household on the mother's shoulders. I guess the statistical data that represents the high percentage of single black women raising children, it's almost over guys, raising children by themselves can be summarized by the film's precept that black women keep black, women keep black men from their children and therein lies the problem that has monumentally impacted the community as a whole. So that sister took, took some time to write that. Go ahead, and, and no, I'm gonna... No, because I don't know if it makes sense. You can do it. Oh, come no, on. No, no, see, th this is how it's she is in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I can do it. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. Yeah, I want Haley. you to say it. I, I trust what you. What you think about that statement, Harry? No, but it don't, it mine don't make sense, so you can just talk. No, see? No, you gotta say it. It doesn't it. make sense. What well, well, you say? How you feel about that? How you feel about hearing that and being, you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you what, I'll give you time to think about that, all right? And I'll go first. Okay. All right, you notice the part where she says, <laughs> the impressionable girl gives voice to the father. Yes. Come on, y'all. She's giving voice to herself. Now, yes. one time did she speak for the father. Mm -hmm. She's speaking about how she feels. Mm -hmm. See? So that's what I mean when, when they try to minimize the, the, child's, the child's feelings. You just completely yeah. overlook how she felt. Basically saying, like, she don't really know what's going on. Right. You're feeling her head up with all this stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? That Okay, that's I'm similar to what I was going to say. Because you know the part where she said that we're trying to um, make the mother seem as if she was a villain or whatever? In this situation, like in the in the um, the video, she's saying, she's saying, the little girl saying how the mother's saying that he ain't S-H-I-T mm -hmm. and all that. Exactly. So it was like, I can't Yeah, see it it's right. kind of clear, basically. If yeah, anything, like, if the situation she's is, saying that he's that like, everybody, right. so how we like making her seem like a villain when she's talking situation. about it? To me, because I see that. Like to me, that's a real situation. Mm -hmm. I see, like when I seen the video, I'm like, yo, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Like that happens everywhere to a lot of. You know what I'm saying? I know women, and I, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. And, but, and, and I get, I get both sides. But I, I kind of, I, I saw what she was trying to say. But I saw the beauty of what was being said. Mm -hmm. So what you did covered so much. So not no one piece is going to cover every part of anything. It's not mm -hmm. possible. But for, for the father, mother, for, I'm sorry, for the daughter, father, father, that, oh, man, you're, you're messy, messy. And um, Thanks. I want to ask you this one question right here. How do you feel about, you know, the uh, the lack of fathers being in uh, children's lives due to the, you know, incarceration system and sometimes the society in itself makes it hard for black men, you know what I'm saying, in this society. But not, you know, but at the same time, we still see you know, also a resurgence of a lot of black men taking care of their family, doing what they're supposed to be doing. But how do you feel about the portrayal of how, you know, over the years, black men aren't in the kids' family, women has to raise, I was raised by a single mother. Most of my friends were raised by single mothers. How do you feel about, you know, just that whole, you know, generation that's went through all that? You know what I'm saying? I think it's extremely unfortunate, mm -hmm. extremely unfortunate, both parents, have nourishment that the child needs, exactly. both of them. And that's one of the main reasons that I made it my intent 
and, and I was just like determined to be in my children's lives regardless it's imperative that I'm there for them and I for the guys who are not there because they can't be is one thing but for the guys who just willfully abandon their responsibilities as a father I, I can't relate to that to be like, honest with and, you. and what's on the can't be list I'm sure viewers are curious what's on the can't be what what would qualify as a, okay he can't be okay when I say can't be I'm referring to the guys who are in jail. Okay, okay, I get that. I'm referring to the guys who may be away over in Iraq or something. You know, okay. I'm not. I'm not giving voice to the ones who will make up any excuse okay. to not be there. Like, oh, I can't do it right now. Not. Nah, I, mean, I don't get along with my baby mom. Yeah, yeah. That's that's <laughs> not the. That's I not mean, what I'm talking about. Okay. Sometimes it's like they really can't be there because of their baby moms. Mm. Yeah, it, well, you talk on that then. Yeah. In a situation like that, maybe. Yeah. See, right. Don't, 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 that's don't doubt your insight here. Look that's how much real too. you took uh, us in a different direction. Don't mm -hmm. question what you can contribute. Just contribute. Yeah, yeah please. Right. So, yeah, explain that, please. Like, i see seen situations when, like I said, my friends, like, their mother either takes their child and goes somewhere, like, far away mm -hmm. to, to prevent them from having a relationship with their father. Or they will like lie on the man saying this is he did this this and the third and then it was like I don't know something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So Steve. again, so many different sides to any one story. Mm -hmm. It depends on whose perspective you want to speak from. Right. And now I want to get into um, what is the future hold? You know what I'm saying? I know you guys are working as a team, and I'm sure that you guys have a, a cast of people that are helping you guys get to the next level. What is the next aim and what's the direction that you guys plan on going on? Well, I have a few projects that are coming out on my label. That Mountain Records that I Miss My Daddy is on is my imprint. I put put it together. Oh, what is the name of it? Mound Records. M-O-U-N. Mound. It's like pronoun. Oh, okay. Noun, okay. but okay. only with noun. an M. I got and you. it's it drives the point home that I do my own records. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's also an acronym for makings of unforgettable new records mm -hmm. and I put it together that way so that I could express myself musically and I wouldn't have to go to a label which I had experienced in the past where I had gone to a major with an idea and it was like well no they didn't believe in it they didn't want to uh, put money into it so I just did it myself and that's the reason that you see a project like I Miss My Daddy mm -hmm. because I wanted to put it out, and I put it out. Mm -hmm. I made it available. Mm -hmm. And there, there are other projects coming behind it. Like I was saying earlier, there are two other videos that were shot in connection with that whole, the, the sessions that we did for the documentary. Those are going to be rolling out, ultimately. Um, what I have coming up in the near future is we're going to do a second video for Haley for her follow-up single entitled, We're Going to Be All Right. And we're shooting that video in August. And she's also going to be at Harlem Week mm -hmm. in August. She'll be performing. And Group Hugs is the name of the next project that I'm going to put out uh, by Charles Bronson. And it's uh, an acronym, Hugs, an acronym for Honoring Unforgettable Groups of Soul. There are two videos that are coming out of that project. Mm -hmm. And it's dealing with a lot of some some serious content pertaining to the music business as pertaining to the question that you asked me earlier. Mm -hmm. That project is going to deal with a lot about the industry, mm -hmm. the music industry. Um, it's going to talk about radio and uh, the, the condition and status of black radio, mm -hmm. what happened. It's going to talk about a lot of stuff. Y'all going to, mm -hmm. I think y'all are going to find it interesting. So. Um. Charlemagne the God, right? He got the book out, uh, Black Privilege and things like that. Do you right. um, do you believe that you know now, in 2017, that race still plays a major role in the industry of you know new artists getting in? Because now you see most of the dudes, artists are black, and there's a lot of you know hip hop is the biggest music in the world all around. Do you think like race or this has transcended it, or do you think like the major players who's all like as I've heard. I forgot what artist says uh, all the major owners are still white 
when it comes to like the head of where you need to be in music. There's still there's really no black people in those seats. Do you think like you know? But they all have so-called good intentions and things like that. Do you believe that's still a major play when it comes to race and in the industry? I don't think race plays a part in the music industry. I know it plays a part <laughs> in the music you industry. You were scared me a bit there. I was right. like, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> so now, I'm gonna have to talk to him a bit. So, yeah, you <laughs> no. got me. You got nah, me. I, I, I don't. I don't want to debate it. It's okay, not something right, that's okay. like, well, do you really think that <laughs> yeah, in exactly. 2017 exactly. it just still goes on? Hell yeah, it goes yeah, on. Right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, let's not be <laughs> fool. Right, right. I think. Uh, I mean, when I when I was working on this group hugs project, I, I started to to explore the groups that I was familiar with, from like the Temptations and the Four Tops and Blue Magic and stuff like that. But when I dug deeper, I started discovering all of these groups, man, that. We, we never hear about, mm. you know, and so I, I went deep and deep into it, and then the racial element became clear. Why don't we hear about these artists? And I decided to talk about it, you know. It's it, it's just so obvious. And then I learned about Sam Cook. This brother was doing what I'm doing back, back in the fifties. Yeah, he was the first Sam one to do it. Yes, you know. <laughs> and so when you see what happened to him, uh huh. It's like, hold on, man. This is not just yeah. like. Th it's something behind this. It's yes. something behind it. How come a black man can't own his own thing? Mm -hmm. You know, how come brothers can't get together and say, you know what, I want to form a distribution company mm -hmm. because nobody else understands our music the way we do. How come it never happened? <laughs> and when when the attempt w w uh, to to make it happen popped off, how come it never did? Mm. It's something to it. Mm. So yeah, it's definitely a racial element to it. And for all the new artists coming out right now, if you have any advice for them, because you know one of the things now that people are starting to get hip to is owning your own masters, owning your publishing, right. and things like that. You know, you got some of the big wigs now, Jay Z, and all these dudes talking about major keys and giving the keys out and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How important is it to really like own your masters and not sign a just a 360 deal and be like, yo, you know what? I ain't got it right now. I'm effed up in the game. Yo, I'll give you everything, man. Movies, whatever, man. Just give me a check. You know, how important is it to just not give your whole soul or your whole life and everything about your way? You know, Jimmy Iovine says, no, 360 deals are good, man. It's beneficial for the artists. I've heard him say that. So, well, what's your opinion on that? You know, also, can you break down what a 360 deal is for those who are not inside the industry like that? Well, okay, my understanding of what the brother just said of a 360 deal is there used to be a, a time where if you were an artist and you were trying to get a deal, you would go knock on the record company doors and tell them, look, check out my demo. Can you invest in it and put me out there, blow me up, make sign me? Like EPMD said, where do I sign? Mm -hmm. I looked there, I said, yo, where do I sign? Yo, mm -hmm. people, you know what I'm saying? So it was like that at one time. And at during that period, the record company's biggest thing was, we're going to keep all of the rights to the songs. The way, you, the way you, as an artist, make your money is through merchandising. Like, you'll go and you'll do a concert, go on a tour. If you sell shirts, hats, shoes with your name on it and your likeness, then that's how you would make your money. But what wound up happening is MP3s came out and CDs came out, file sharing, to where you if you if somebody wanted your record, they didn't have to go to a record store anymore. Mm -hmm. Which is the reason that you don't have record stores. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So the record company started losing money. And in order for them to stay afloat, they had to figure out another way to to get revenue so they figured let's tap into that revenue that was left for the artists where you do your own you, you sell your own merchandising shows your shows and the way they have it structured now is that if they sign you meaning bankroll you and make you visible to the world through the camera lens that they own then they have a right to 360 of your career, meaning 360, a complete cycle, mm -hmm. meaning everything you do in the complete cycle of your career, they want whatever the percentage is. What? Whatever the percentage yeah. is. If, 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 
the artist goes and gets a, a book deal, right? And let's say Simon and Schuster wants to sign them to a book deal, and they offer them five million dollars so that they could uh, distribute the book or whatever. That record company that signed you ten years ago, they want to get a portion of that. And then if you go to Victoria's Secrets and you you know a chick. A, a, a female has a nice little line of lace underwears that they want to sell and put their name on it. Kim Kardashian thongs mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. That record company from 10 years ago mm -hmm. or however long ago they signed you, mm -hmm. they want a portion of that and a piece of this and that. So they Film, want a piece of everything. Anything you do. Yes. Anything you do. 360. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And people right. find it. Well, that's the people who want fame. Yes. That's what they do. Uh -huh. So if, if, you, if you're not really focusing so much on the fame, then perhaps you get a chance to have right. some degree of fortune. Right. If you got a little business knowledge, that, a little that business knowledge. Good deal. Right. You know, I, speaking of deals, uh, you know, I, I kind of drive the point home with regards to owning masters. That you, yes, I think yes, that was yes, the second question. No, that's exactly question. what I was going to go into. Yeah. All right. Years ago, I entered a songwriting contest called the John Lennon Songwriting Contest. Okay. And I. Uh, Long story short, man, I won first place uh, nationally, right? And the the reward was that I got two thousand dollars in cash. I got five thousand dollars worth of studio equipment. And the second part of the reward was that I would get a five thousand dollar publishing deal with EMI Publishing. EMI is a publishing company that uh, I think they 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 went out of business. Now. I'm not. I think it was like an independent type of or EMI. No, I yeah, I, I think they were from London or something like uh -huh. that. But that was the second part of it. So you know, after I got my little reward money and the little equipment, um, it came time to talk about the publishing deal, and they called me in. I had a, a meeting. I had done all my homework about how the thing worked. And I went in with the people, and they wanted to give me $5,000 for that song. And I said, well, I am going to keep half of my publishing, right? They said, yeah, 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 you're going to keep half of it, and we're going to get the other half. And I was just so happy. I was like, I made it. We, I'm about to blow up. Mm -hmm. So the contract came in the mail. But and it didn't, say what it we didn't reflect on. what exactly. he said on that phone. Exactly. It said that um, at the end of the contract, it said that EMI would get 100% publishers' royalties, and Charles would get 100% writers' royalties. So I thought that was their way of telling me, be smart, kid. Take that contract to a lawyer. Mm. So that's what I did. <laughs> I took it to a lawyer, and the lawyer looked at it. He said, this is a standard rip-off contract. Wow. So he just took his pen. He just crossed out the 100% for them, and he put 50. And I took it back to them, and I was just like, we gonna do this. They wouldn't budge. They didn't want to get off that budge. You know? And I was telling them, I said, look, I have other songs. This is not the only song I have. I got hits for you, I got, yeah, I got some stuff, man. And I said, do you want to hear it? And I remember I, I put the little CD in for him, for him to check it out. And he had like a little, a little stereo in his office. I put the CD in and he had the level on like two. I'm like, you know, turn it up. Listen to what I'm doing. They didn't want that. Right. They wanted more it's like a... Like, why, why like it if they... You, you wasn't ready to sell yeah, they don't want to like it because yeah. they don't want to give it up 100%. Yeah, yeah. See, they was looking... We'll love, we probably love it, but... Right. Yeah. Like, no, no, they was looking don't. at that one song. They, right. And he kept saying... I remember he kept saying, um, yeah, you know, you, you have some songs. That's that's pretty good. But but that song right there, we're going to give you $5,000 for that right now. He kept saying that. And it, it dawned that's on me that, that, you know, dude wanted a... He wanted more like a one night stand. Mm -hmm. I was trying to have like a marriage, like mm -hmm. get in right. with them and like right. and grow and grow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that's gonna be the start of my right. career, but they wanted to cherry pick your brilliance. Yeah, they want. And, and somebody later on told me, "Oh man, you should have took it. You should have took it." And I even heard stuff like, "You always get jerked when you first get in. That first one, you gotta give them that song so that you can get in. You can always come up with other ones." But I'm like, if you do your business right, that one song. You can eat off that 
like you're supposed to eat off of it. Yeah, it's down. I'm, I'm not saying that I don't want to do business with people and they can't make money because they should they should earn money from what they're doing for the project. But don't don't take it all, man. Speaking on that though. When you think about that, imagine all, well, not even imagine, but look at all the artists that's been taken advantage of throughout the industry. Yes, yes. It seems like only a small percentage wins. Very small. As opposed to, because yeah. it seems like they said, yo, most rappers are broke. Mm -hmm. Most people are in debt from signing bad contracts and bad deals and loans that like, a high interest that's given to them by the corporation that they still got to pay back. Right. So they right. live in a fantasy as opposed to, you know. Standing strong on what they believe in in themselves. Right now, some can jam like that. Now, some of them got to own mismanagement also. Some of them never were financially literate. They were buying a lot of stuff materially. So some mm. of them, the deals were not the best, but then they took what they had and squandered it. Mm. So so it goes two ways. So Because yeah. yeah. when you do get, if you get, if you have some fa financial knowledge, you'd be surprised. You put your money in the right places, it'll work for you. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, it just appears to be... A price that you gotta pay if you're given the privilege to be in front of the world camera and the world can see you mm -hmm. and that's that fame element mm -hmm. and I'm more comfortable I mean it's it's cool having the fame but like my man Curtis Mayfield said he said there's nothing wrong with having a few pennies in your pocket when you're up on stage dancing and and doing a boogaloo or whatever it is you know because <laughs> what's the point Mm -hmm. If you're just going around, going on a tour to make someone else benefit for mm -hmm. your hard work and labor. Mm -hmm. Again, the record companies deserve to be paid because of the work that they do to bring the artists to the attention of the world. Mm -hmm. But it's but take fair. all of it, it's yeah. like, come yeah, on. Man. Right. So I'm comfortable with just doing it grassroots, you know, building up a following as opposed to Having somebody just splash me out in front of the whole world with what I'm doing, and then when they when they ready to move on to the next project, or or or, or view my next content as mm -hmm. not worthy, and they just drop me, I'm back down to the streets anyway. Well, what do you say to those now who are using the internet? You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. there's some right now who's uh who's yeah. trying to be like, yo, I'm effed up, yo, they about to sign me, and I, you know, I don't want to just independent is cool, but. They're not, I'm not getting the money as quickly. If I know if I sign, they'll give me 360, but I know my face will be out there. I'll be able to make that money on a whole nother. Like, what, yeah. what do you say to those people who are caught I, up in that? Be honest, I wouldn't say anything to them because <laughs> everybody's situation is different, man. That's you know, to that brother that's going through something, yeah. he's on hard times. Yeah. His, his, his moms might uh, have that, medical yeah. bills or something, man, and he needs that money right then. Yeah, yeah. You know, that could inspire his decision. Yeah. You know, so I'm in no position to tell anybody what it is that they should do. Maybe he's not really concerned about the, the future aspect of his career. Maybe he just wants to be a one hit wonder. Okay. You know what I mean? Everybody now, has I've heard different... dudes who said all I need is one. I don't even care. Like I've heard these conversations yeah, yeah. with some brothers. Right. Like... <laughs> and it works for some people. Yeah. It, it just don't work for me. Yeah. You know, I, I'm because I got more than just one, one project. Yeah, I know yeah. what I'm coming with, yeah, man. Right. You know? And you made a reference of, you know, what you was referring to a record company, they splash you out. Now, maybe you both have much more knowledge than I. With the technology now, or with the access of mm -hmm. the internet, a young, savvy artist. I mean, I mean, we're, you know, preaching to the choir. That's what you've done. Look what you've done within your own scope of power. Mm -hmm. Look how you've networked. So if an artist or producer or manager is hungry enough, and they know how to work this internet thing. I mean, they can't be as competitive. Obviously, there's a large company. But if you savvy, boy, you can get yourself right in the front of the audiences you need that will financially support you. Indeed. And if you're not that savvy enough, hire some people mm -hmm. who are. Yes. You know, you have to know how to delegate and mm -hmm. be comfortable with doing so. Very true. You know, because I'm not going to be able to do everything. I'm, I'm, I'm a studio rat. You know, I love the creative aspect. I love putting the songs together. You know, the artists will come in and do their part, and when they leave, I'm still sitting there. I'm like, all right, how can I arrange this? You know, that that's my specialty. You know, I'm not gonna be on Twitter and and and, and um, you know the Instagrams and doing that. I got people that deal with that stuff for me because you do have to have a presence there. I'm not gonna negate that. I'm not gonna be like, oh nah. F all that. I just no. want to do nah, cause no, after no. after you do all that music, <laughs> how, you how people gonna know about it? That's a fact. You know, so I, I have 
I have people that's that's dealing and, with that. They, they're part. calling the, in, the the internet the great equalizer in a sense because mm -hmm. now you know you don't have to chase you know a record label. You don't right. have, and we see it now. The new generation is nothing but internet stars. Yes. You know right. what I'm saying? And yeah. that's now the labels kind of got to come at them with certain deals and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say to these internet stars who have built a platform on the internet and now the labels are trying to get them? What kind of advice could you give them about going and dealing with some type of labels? You know, because what if they come to you guys now? Like, okay, we'll see what you guys are doing. Well, if they have a presence <laughs> like that, yeah. I wouldn't give them advice. I would seek advice from them. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, tell me what you did. Okay. School okay. me, man, because I'm... I'm a sponge also. Okay, you know, sure. I'm not so caught up in what it is that I'm doing that I can't listen to another angle from somebody and be like, wow, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And then adapt it or weave it into what it is that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's wisdom. That's what wisdom is. And uh, also, um, with the projects, where can like the people go to actually find the projects to listen to the whole project, listen to the song, you know, download it or any of that type of situation? Well, this first project that we, we did, I miss my daddy. This is an EP by Haley, and that's gonna be rolled out sometime this month, and um, that's gonna be available on iTunes, all the major uh, digital download sites online. It's also gonna be on Spotify, all of that. So that's gonna be available, and um, you can check out the website that we have. We have the URL for www.moundrecords.com. That's M-O-U-N records.com and you're going to see updates on that with regards to everything that we're doing with Haley and also the future projects that we're going to be coming out with. I'm also affiliated with a group that we call Lou York. It stands for Lyricists of Unique Yet Ordinary Rhythms and Keys and it's a consortium of blood cousins who compose music for themselves as well as other artists. You're going to see that on Mountain Records. You're going to be you're going to get all the updates on that. And all of these songs that I was telling you about earlier are going to be rolling out. And also look out for the Group Hugs mm -hmm. project, that's just, which is coming okay. very soon. And Haley, what are you looking forward to when it comes to, you know, just being a singer and just your future as an artist? Well, I'm looking forward to... Hmm, I'm looking forward to, like, performing on big stages that celebrities have performed on. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. We definitely were hoping to see you guys there. And uh, where could they follow you guys on Instagram and Twitter and things like that? Um, all of my social networks are slash Mount Records. Like, okay. Yeah, Mount Records. Instagram slash Mount Records. Twitter slash slash Mount Records. They at Mount Records. That shows you how yeah, I'm, 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 you know. Um, MountRecords.com. Uh, if I think of any more, I'll let you know. Haley, let them know. Well, what you got, Haley? Like, yeah, because well, she got a gang of them. Uh-oh. Yeah. Hey. Twitter, my, Instagram. My Facebook is Haley Smith Sings. My name is spelled H-A-L-E-Y. My YouTube and my Twitter is Get to Know Haley with the number two. Mm. Facebook, that's what it was. Facebook slash Mound Records. Mm. How, how you say it? Visit us. Follow us. Follow us on yeah. your yeah. facts. Yeah. Follow us. We said no, 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 no. Follow us on Twitter. But you right? said visit. <laughs> visit. You said visit, visit, follow. Did I, did as I say long as they come yes, in and check it out. All right, all right, all right. As right. long as they roll up in. Nah, but guys, yeah. man, I truly appreciate your time again. And if I could get a shout out for Key of Life Productions and hiphopisrael.com. I know it's a lot. Okay, Key you want to say it at the same time? Hip hop is right. You know we're not gonna say it at the yes, same time. Yes, we are. Time. We I bet you. Say, I bet you. I want to give a big shout out to Kid Life like Productions, Productions and Hip Hop, hip -hop is, is Real. real. What I'm about to say, Mom? Please don't think I'm mad. But you can't force me to like your boyfriend like you can't force me to hate my dad. The please don't like him and he ain't stories is emotional coercion. And as much as I respect what you told me happened, Mom, that's your version. I know it's frustrating since it didn't work out after several years and two kids. But if I can't get to know him for myself, I'll only make the same mistake that you did. All my wishes is frozen.